It is um, more and more uh, critical to figure out what the pace is and what the uh, quality is of post-transplant immune uh, reconstitution. Specifically of all of the blood lineages after an allogeneic bone marrow transplantation that are coming up again is the uh, T-cell lineage. T-cells, just like AIDS patients, um, have stay for a long time low, relatively low, and that impacts in a very negative way on the risks that these patients have for getting uh, infections, specifically viral and fungal. Um, this has been known for a long, long time, but so far we have not been able to really develop a good way of monitoring that. Um, and also figuring out what the consequences of this monitoring should be. Therefore, within my lab and within the labs of other uh, colleagues, uh, we've been working over the, over the last years to come up with novel strategies to boost thymic function. Um, a number of them are going now into a clinical studies. Uh, one of the first ones that we have tested is an, inter, uh, is an interleukin called interleukin-7. And that is probably a, a growth factor that comes closest to be a, a universal lymphoid growth factor. It uh, stimulates the earliest uh, precursor uh, T-cell all the way up to a mature uh, T-cell um, and basically uh, maintains um, the whole, uh, whole uh, T-cell pool. It has been shown in a number of studies in mice and even in monkeys that this uh, cytokine is relatively safe in contrast to other uh, cytokines within that same family such as IL-2 and IL-15 um, and that actually already at the lowest of doses when it was given to a humans can stimulate CD4 and CD8 uh, counts. Um, most of the studies so far have been in non-transplant settings, but we have been able to do a phase one study where we tested it after an allogeneic bone marrow uh, uh, transplantation and saw exactly as I mentioned um, increases of both CD4 and CD, uh, CD8 cells. And what was uh, specifically relevant within the context of an allogeneic transplant, we didn't see evidence for a graft versus host. So therefore we think that this is probably one of the most promising and most potent cytokines um, and we hope very much that within the near future that we will be able to follow this phase one study with a phase two study. A second agent that definitely has a promise also is keratinocyte growth factor. This will stimulate thymic function in a different way it will do it mostly by regrowing the thymic stroma within the thymus and in that way uh, form a more functional uh, thymus. KGF is already used uh, clinically for bone marrow transplantation patients, specifically to help them uh, with a problem called uh, mucositis, uh, which happens after any kind of high dose therapy that we give to a leukemia patient or to a transplant uh, patient. Um, it was tested for a number of other uh, purposes also, but so far has not been tested uh, clinically if it could stimulate a thymic function. Um, at our center, we're currently doing a, a phase two study where we're looking not only at uh, KGF, but actually uh, combining it with another uh, strategy, and that is called sex steroid uh, blockade. This goes back to an old uh, principle. Uh, that it was known already for about 60, 70 years or so that if you, um, if you uh, castrate animals that that will lead to a regrowth, an outgrowth of their thymus. Um, we have various drugs that can do this also, that can chemically uh, castrate. Many of these drugs are currently being used for uh, prostate cancer uh, patients. So these drugs can also be used with a KGF in this a phase two study to see if that could possibly boost T cell numbers and a thymic function after an allogeneic transplant. We're currently doing that with a drug called Luprolite, which is an LHRH um, agonist, which is already widely used for, um, for uh, prostate cancer. Most of the other strategies um, that could possibly boost thymic function are in the early stages and are mostly tested within mouse. Um, some of these studies, for instance, <clears throat> focus on the stimulation of the endothelial cells 
um, those cells within many organs can make factors that can help with the uh, regrowth of a damaged uh, organ. Some newer work that we haven't uh, published yet um, indicates that uh, that also happens within the thymus and that um, an endothelial cell within the thymus during times of damage is able to make a factor called BMP4, which seems to be relevant for the uh, regeneration. So that offers another avenue for the development of a novel strategy. Uh, finally, I would like to mention um, another cell that seems to be very relevant, not just within the thymus, but in other organs also, uh, that can boost the process of the whole uh, a, a regeneration, and that is the innate lymphoid cell. An innate lymphoid cell is capable of making a number of cytokines, but the one that is specifically relevant here is IL-22. And this cytokine has been shown both by us in the thymus and within the gut to be relevant for the, uh, for the healing of the damaged thymus or the damaged uh, gut. We're currently moving forward with a phase one study where we're going to use IL-22 uh, together with a steroid uh, regimen as a first line uh, treatment for patients with a graft versus host. In that way, we hope within the setting of a graft versus host, to not only block the T cells from causing a graft versus host through the steroids, but also at that same time start the healing process of the damaged gut by giving the IL-22. We know from our studies that IL-22, as I mentioned already, can do the same things to the stroma within the, within the thymus. So a secondary outcome that we will be measuring in that study is if it can also have positive impact on thymic regrowth during a graft versus host. A cell therapy, and that is based upon taking a, a hematopoietic stem cell, an ex vivo differentiated partially along the differentiation towards a T cell. What you then end up with is a precursor of a T cell. And those cells are of course committed, they're no longer a stem cells. And if you would transfer those into a mouse, and we would like to do that of course within humans also, then you can see an early wave of T cells that are all derived from these transferred precursor cells. Um, by doing that, you also have a vehicle for all kinds of um, um, engineered uh, cells. So, uh, for instance, we have been able in mouse models to, do, uh, to put a CD19 uh, car in one of these precursor uh, T cells and in that way uh, creating, within the context of an allogeneic transplant, an early wave of CD19 car positive uh, T cells, which would not cause any graft versus host, but were very functional against CD19 positive uh, cancers. Okay.